Okay, in this tutorial we're going to learn about Dynamic Trunking Protocol, or DTP. DTP is a Cisco proprietary protocol, so it's only going to work if you have two Cisco switches. And so in the packet tracer here, we're going to, I'm going to show you how DTP works, and we're going to configure it and show you some of the benefits. Now, on a switch, every port on the switch is either going to be an access port, right, access mode essentially, or a trunk, right? And a trunk will allow multiple VLANs to be carried across the trunk. Now, in this scenario we have right here, all the ports on the switch are access ports right now, right? And they're all by default on VLAN 1, except for port 3 right here, going to this PC, which is on VLAN 20. And on this switch, on port 3, going to this PC is also on VLAN 20 right so we have a situation where we have two switches that have been VLAN we've got VLAN 1 for all the ports and then we have one port and one port that are on VLAN 20 and we want them to be able to communicate we want this PC on VLAN 20 to be able to communicate with this PC on VLAN 20 and of course we want this PC to communicate with this PC well without a trunk right now right we have port 1 and port 1 right just connected together with a crossover cable and by default they're on VLAN 1 and so what that means is this PC can ping the other PC right so this PC right here pinged the other one on the other side and you can see you got replies and then this PC wants to talk to this PC on VLAN 20 right but it can't because this is not a trunk link it's a access link right access port on VLAN 1, this this link right here. So what we need to do is we need to turn this into a trunk. Now, so far I've been doing this manually. And what's cool about DTP, the Cisco Dynamic Trunking Protocol is, with DTP enabled, the ports can auto-negotiate with one another and can come up and decide, essentially, whether it, the link is going to be a trunk or whether it's going to be an access port. And that auto-negotiation is you, done with DTP. DTP communicates across the link using advertisements and then it changes the mode dynamically either into an access port or a trunk port, right? So the other interesting thing about DTP and why you want to know how to use it is is that it is enabled by default on the Cisco switches in the Cisco CCNA curriculum and on the switches here in the packet tracer. So it's on by default. So you it's useful to know how it works. So first of all, here are the commands we're going to learn how to use and our goal is to turn this link into a trunk but to do it by using DTP and allowing it to auto-negotiate from one side to the other, changing the other side just through the auto-negotiation process. So just to show you right off the bat, I'm going to click on this switch, I'll hit enter, I'll type enable, and I'll do a show DTP, right? So I do a show DTP, and you can see right off the bat that DTP is sending DTP hello packets every 30 seconds. So it's on by default. Um, dynamic trunking timeout is 300 seconds timeout, and two interfaces using DTP, right? So, um, so right off the bat, it sees this link, and it sees that the other link is also using DTP. Now, if DTP is on and enabled by default on these links, right, there can only be four modes. It can either be access mode, trunk mode, dynamic auto mode, or dynamic desirable mode. And by default, if you don't do anything, the, when DTP is enabled on the port, let's say right here, it's in dynamic auto mode, right? And so if this port's in dynamic auto mode and this port's in dynamic auto mode, which they both are because DTT, DTP is enabled by default, then the resulting link port will be an access port or an access mode, essentially, right? So what we can do, though, is so they're both in dynamic auto, right? So let's see here. We'll do one other show command. We'll say, 
we're going to do show interface fast ethernet 01 switch port. So we'll do show int for interface fa0 slash 1 switch port. Okay, and when we do that, you can see that you can see that switch ports enabled the administrative mode just like I said is dynamic auto right so you can see that it's in dynamic auto mode by default right operational mode static access it's an access port right now trunking encapsulation it's capable of doing dot 1q 802.1q um, VLAN 1 is the access mode right now and the native mode for trunking has not been configured so VLAN 1 is also the, tr the native mode um, no voice VLAN all that okay let's scroll down alright that's it okay so what we'll do is we'll go into this switch port and we'll say conf t to get to global config mode and then we'll say interface fa0 slash 1 to get into our interface 1. Now why am I doing this? Because this is interface 1 on this switch right here, right? Switch 0, switch 0, interface 1, and we want to turn it into a trunk, right? So, basically, if I, I'll say SW switch port trunk allowed switch port trunk allowed and I'll say VLAN 1 through 20 right and that'll allow VLANs 1 through 20 across the link right and now to change the mode so I'll say switch port mode and then a question mark and then you can see that it can either be an access mode, trunk mode to manually set it as an access port or to manually set it as a trunk and then you've also got this dynamic right and I've told you that right now it's already in dynamic auto so let's check out dynamic right so we'll go and put in dynamic and then we'll put in a question mark and you can see there's the two modes auto and desirable right and I told you those are the two modes here access trunk dynamic auto dynamic desirable right well if I put it in dynamic desirable mode alright if I turn it into dynamic desirable mode you can see that now I'll just show you on this side the trunk link is dynamic desirable and on this side it's in dynamic auto and if one side is in dynamic desirable and the other side is in dynamic auto the trunk is supposed to turn into I mean the link is supposed to turn into a trunk so now you can see we, we, the, we had orange lights for a second now we have green lights so now the question is is this now a trunk well the best way to test it is to see if VLAN 20 can ping across before it couldn't let's see if it can now we'll go like that and ping and you can see now it must be a trunk because now this PC can ping this PC across VLAN 20 and this PC can still ping across so now VLAN 20 and VLAN 1 are communicating across the link and we've, achie we've achieved a trunk if we look in here and we go control C right control C and we do a show interfaces FA01 switch port you'll see that now whoops it always does that switch port enabled administrative mode notice dynamic desirable now the operational mode is not an access port it's now a trunk port operational mode is a trunk you can see that it is a trunk and uh, and it worked now depending on how this how you configure both ends if this end is dynamic desirable and this end is dynamic auto then the link will be a trunk if this 
end is a trunk end and this is dynamic auto then it'll be a trunk. Of course a trunk and a trunk equals a trunk. An access link and an access link equals the access link. Um, dynamic auto, dynamic auto equals access. And so you have to have, uh, you have to know what you get when you have one on one side and one on the other, right? If you have an access link on one side and dynamic auto on the other, you get an access link. If you have a trunk link and dynamic auto on, on the other side, you get a trunk. Let's try that. So what we'll do is conf t, we'll do interface 01, and this time we'll change the mode to switch port mode trunk, right? Hit enter. And now this side's been configured as a trunk. This side is still dynamic auto, right? We haven't changed that, right? This side has been in dynamic auto the whole time. Now this side is a trunk, trunk mode, and let's see if we still have a trunk here. We'll get the PC and we'll try to ping. And you can see that we can still ping. So if this is a trunk and this is auto, we get a trunk. If this is dynamic desirable and this is auto, we get a trunk, right? But if we change this back to dynamic auto, it won't be so. So what we'll do is we'll do that. We'll say switch port mode dynamic auto right all right now it's dynamic auto mode and now we'll see if we can we'll give it a second notice it's now orange on either side and open up the command prompt and try to ping across and you can see that now it, it can no longer ping across So as soon as we put this back to dynamic auto on this side, we lose our trunk. So anyway, DTP is very cool because we haven't even had to, to configure this switch at all. We didn't even save what VLANs were allowed. We only configured allowed VLANs on this side and configured this side for the, the, the switch port mode of a trunk or dynamic desirable. And the other side automatically negotiated the link into a trunk link on its side as well. Where we end off is dynamic desirable plus dynamic auto on the other link, which is the default mode, equals a trunk. If you want to see how the other how these other combinations work, you can go to my website at dancecourses.com and look up the DTP page under Cisco CCNA3, and I'll have a chart which shows how all the different modes on either side and the resulting link, whether it'll be a trunk or an access link. There are a couple of situations that you do not want to have. In other words, a um, couple of things here. Now typically the way I've always done this is that I'll just decide if I want this link to be a trunk, I'll make this side a trunk manually and I'll make this side a trunk manually, right? And when I do that, you know, if you put a trunk on one side and a trunk on the other, you get a trunk, right? And if you're going to do that, then you might as well use the switch port non-negotiate or no negotiate um, command which will basically turn off DTP and stop DTP advertisements from running. Remember DTP is on by default so why if you're going to manually configure the trunk on both sides there's no point in having the DTP protocol sending packets every 30 seconds across the link. So that's one thing the switch port no negotiate command will turn off those advertisements. The other thing is that if you configure one side to be a trunk manually and you configure the other side to be an access port manually then you'll get a broken link pretty much. It's not recommended to do that. You're saying I want this side to be a trunk and I want this side to be an access port and then you'll get basically a broken link.